Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about Nevada and the Democrats' possible path to victory in Nevada, looking at the uh, voter registration numbers, turnout numbers, and a little bit of polling, not too much. So we're going to go ahead and delve into that today. Now, uh, I did do a video a few days ago about Pennsylvania. If you want to know about how the Democrats can move forward in Pennsylvania, please check out that video. And I also did a video about Florida and how essentially the Democrats cannot win Florida. Uh, you can check that out as well. Go ahead and check out those two videos and comment in those as well. But in this video, we are going to be focusing on Nevada. Now, before we get into the numbers and talk about Nevada and the, and the demographics and, and how the election and the pathway to victory is for the Democrats, I just want to mention that Nevada is a vote-by-mail state, but not entirely a vote-by-mail state. So each voter will get a ballot in the mail. So that that is definitely going to happen. But there is also in-person early voting and in-person election day voting. Now, the fact that it's now totally vote by mail does help Democrats. Democrats do well in vote by mail as, in, as well as in Nevada and in many states, but in Nevada as well. So this does help the Democrats. I just want you to know that it is vote by mail, but it's not 100% vote by mail, you will see a lot of people show up on election day. And, and it seems like the numbers for in-person early voting is pretty low. All right, so let's go ahead and first talk about the composition of the vote in the state, because unlike Pennsylvania, where you saw the vote spread out amongst a lot of regions, that's not the case when it comes to Nevada. In fact, the, the vote is very much centralized. So if we look at the numbers in the state, we can see that Clark County itself of the 2020 vote was 69.2% of the overall vote cast in the state. So an overwhelming majority of the vote comes from the Las Vegas region and the suburbs around Las Vegas within Clark County. So I think you know where this video is going to go as far as where the Democrats need to concentrate as far as the electoral strategy for the entire state. Now, if we look at other counties, uh, Washoe County was 17.9% of the turnout in 2020. So a significant amount of the vote. And then the rest of the state was 12%. So not that much of the rest of the state really matters because that chunk of the vote is also very Republican. So for the Democrats, we are really looking at Washoe County and Clark County being the base of their support. Now, if we look at the total vote for the Democrats in 2020, or the, the vote for Joe Biden in 2020, we see that 74.2% of Joe Biden's votes came from Clark County, okay? So Clark County is important overall in the state, but... For the Biden campaign and now the Harris campaign, it is extremely important to have high turnout. The higher and higher you turn out that number, the higher and higher you're, you're just going to get a lot more votes. So that's important. As far as the Democrats, 18.2% uh, of the total vote was Washoe County. So uh, again, a significant amount, not the 74% the that we see with Clark County but a big amount nonetheless. And then only 7.6% of the overall Democratic vote comes from all of the other places. So we're not really going to be focusing on that since we're talking about the Democratic path to victory. We're not going to be concentrating on those other counties. We're mostly going to be concentrating on Clark and Washoe County. Now for the Republicans, yes, Clark County is important, it's, but it's 64% of Donald Trump's overall vote in 2020. So it's a little bit less. The Republicans rely a lot more on the rural counties. As a matter of fact, the rural counties were 18.2% of the overall Trump vote, which is less than Washoe County, which was 17.4%. So if you're a Democrat, this actually looks good because as someone who has done field in the past, organizing a nice central location like a city or a suburb is a lot easier to do than in rural counties, which can be very hard to uh, reach out to voters. Now, there is one thing with the Democrats that is not good, and that is between 2020 and 2024, the latest registration numbers as of August of 2024, the Democrats have lost about 51 
51,000 voters. 51,000 voters have been purged from the voter rolls. Again, as I've mentioned in other videos, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That could be because people moved, re-registered, people, you know, die, right? So this happens. The Republicans have only gained about 10,000. Now that, when you compare minus 51,000 to 10,000, that seems like a big difference. And, and, you know, it is. But if you look at people who have registered as non-party affiliate voters or non-partisan voters, we have 344,000 between 2020 and 2024, the recent numbers, that have registered as non-party affiliates. So in this sense, this is a, this is, this is a huge number. So it makes that 10,000 that the Republicans have gained seem absolutely insignificant because now in the state of Nevada, we are just seeing people shift totally towards being nonpartisan. And that for the Democratic Party isn't really a, a good look considering it is a closed primary state. This just seems to be a trend that's happening in a lot of states where you have a lot of transients or people who come from other places and move there like Florida, like Arizona, like North Carolina, you're seeing a lot of people just register as nonpartisan now in states where you do have partisan registration. So a lot of this could just do with newer voters coming into the state, have no connection to the state. They don't know the Democratic or Republican Party candidates. They don't know who Harry Reid or Paul Axalt or people like that are. So there's no connection, so there's no connection to a primary, so they just go ahead and register as nonpartisan and vote in general elections. And this is a trend that we're seeing throughout states that have a lot of people who move into the state from other places. So this just goes with the trend of what we see. The big question then is if we see these nonpartisans taking up a big amount of the vote, how are they going to vote? Now, first, before we continue into that, let's talk about the composition of the registered voters over the last few years. So in 2016, when Hillary Clinton won the state of Nevada, 40% of the electorate were registered as Democrats. 33% of the electorate were registered as Republicans. And only 28% were registered as some sort of other party. Now, as of August of this year, 42% are now registered as another party, 30% are registered as Democrats, and 28% are registered as Republicans. So you can see it's a, a total flip. And even though the Republicans have actually gained 10,000 voters, their actual share of the overall composition of the vote has actually gone down by 4%. So this is significant that the, the nonpartisan voters are now the number one voting block in the state of Nevada. But again, how do they vote? Now, I wanted to actually do this precinct by precinct level, but the problem is, is that would take days of data cleaning, so I didn't do it on a precinct level. So I decided to go to the next level, which is the state assembly races. So essentially what I did is I said, okay, if the number of nonpartisan registrants goes up, does that district or those districts become more democratic or do they become more Republican? And if you're a Democrat, the news is good because as non-party registration goes up, Democratic votes in these state assembly races also go up. Let me go ahead and show you the chart that I have here. So if we look at our chart right here, we do, I just did a really quick chart of the numbers. You can see that, um, and by the way, it is statistically significant. I just have that um, put somewhere else, but you can see that as the number of registered independents, which is down here, goes up, the number of, or the percentage of Democratic vote goes up. So as you can see, our data point right here, in this data point here, we have 44% of the people in this state assembly district are registered as nonpartisan, yet 73% of the vote went Democratic. So you can see as it is less independent, it's more Republican. As it is more independent, it's more Democratic. The R square that we have here is 0.4362. So a decent R square as well. So this tells me that the Democrats uh, should be looking at these nonpartisan voters as more likely to be 
Democratic voters than Republican voters based on the 2022 state assembly results. Now, of course, as I've mentioned previously, the whole shebang, for the most part, is in Clark County. Now, Clark County wasn't necessarily as great for the Democrats uh, in 2020 as it was in 2016. It's because some shifts that we've seen in the electorate nationwide that also play a role here in Clark County. So I have the precinct map up from 2020 from the New York Times to look at the changes in the vote. Now, there are a few things that are pretty noticeable right off the bat. And this is right here, the North Las Vegas area. Now, according to the most recent demographics, about 40 to 45% of the people living in this area are Hispanic. So this has a very high Hispanic population. And in 2020, like with Miami-Dade County and the southern part of Texas, where we see a lot of Hispanic voters, we started to see the trend with Hispanic voters going more toward the GOP. And in this situation in North Vegas, we essentially see the same thing as well. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, Kamala Harris has to really do three things, solidify the young vote, solidify the moderate vote, and solidify the Hispanic vote. So the thing, if you're looking at election day and you're looking at can the Democrats actually perform well in Nevada, it's this North Las Vegas area that is where you want to see if the Democrats can bring down the margins. If they're able to bring down the margins quite well in North Las Vegas right here, then the Democrats will be doing well. Now, you do have the northern and the western suburbs, as well as Henderson, um, down here as well. And as you can see, some of these have just made some moderates or small shifts. And if we look at the overall numbers, so if we look at Summerlin South, we see some 53, 46, 54, 49, 50s. We see some really close splits. And if you're the Democrats, you're looking at maybe taking some of this area and flipping it. Uh, Henderson has taken a lot longer to flip, but it does seem like the western suburbs of Las Vegas seem to be much easier to flip. And all of this is kind of newer and pushing out development in the northwest this seems to be more and more the Republican area. If you're familiar with, let's say, the Salt Lake City region, how Salt Lake City and the areas around it, South Salt Lake and all that, are very Democratic. And the further south you get into the county, it gets more Republican. This would be more like Harriman or Draper and, or other places like that. If you're familiar with uh, Salt Lake City and Utah uh, political uh, geography. So it... I mean, there are some numbers that are pretty good up here, but the Democrats really need to make this darker blue. So if we look at the, the map from 2016, you can see how North Vegas is extremely dark blue, with, but you can see this is significantly less. So the Democrats really need to turn, they need to change the vote in North Vegas. And then in these areas, they need to turn out the Democrats and the NPAs, the nonpartisan affiliate voters, in order to win Clark County. Now, the other place that I mentioned that can be very important for the Democrats and actually can make the difference in the election is Reno and Washoe County. So as you can see, as we look at the change from 2016, we see a lot of precincts in and around the western part of Reno going more and more Democratic and in some places having some major shifts. Parts of Sparks are also going more democratic. Yes, there are a few other precincts that are more that are slightly going more Republican. But Washoe County has been one of these counties for the last, let's say, 10 years that have been making that slow shift to the Democratic side. And now they've kind of like gone over the line and it looks like a place where Democrats can maybe push a little bit forward in the vote totals here. I think it, it could be, it has the potential of being something like Orange County in Florida, where it had been Republican for many, many years, and then you had 96, 2000, where it was really close, and now you have it that it's a reliable Democratic, uh, Democratic uh, county. You might see that in Washoe as well, but as you can see, there have been a lot of changes. Reno is turning very much blue, which, you know, 20 years ago or so, 
it wasn't that. In fact, Washoe County is, you know, where some of the most conservative members of the state assembly came from in Nevada. So these are the two areas that the Democrats really need to push the vote in in order to win. Now, one last thing that I want to close on is the Harry Reid political machine. Now, Harry Reid has passed away. He passed away a few years ago, but the machine is still there. But it wasn't there for a while because a lot of the Bernie Sanders supporters, I mean, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, but they took over the Democratic Party in Nevada. And when they did kind of the apparatus of the Harry Reid machine that really knows how to turn out voters, essentially didn't collapse, but just wasn't as organized as it was before. Now kind of the Harry Reid faction of the Democratic Party has taken over. And so I expect that machine to be well oiled once again and going ahead and pushing out Democratic voters. Now the Democratic machine is quite different from the culinary workers machine. So you really have two machines in Clark County that are going to absolutely push the Democratic vote. As soon as these two solidify and they don't have a rift like they did in 2016 and they did in 2020, I think now both of these are on the same page and they're going to really push up the numbers in Clark County. So the internal politics within Nevada really shows that the Democrats look to be in a good position. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here. So what do I think? I think that the registration numbers give Democrats a little bit of a pause and, uh, and make them worry a little bit. But if you look at those numbers as far as non-affiliated voters actually voting in those state assembly races, we see they're more than likely to go Democratic. So this is a good trend for Democrats. Do I think that the polls are right with Nevada? Yeah, it's going to be a close state. It always is. As a matter of fact, all these states that we're going to be talking about are going to be close states. But I don't think that we should, you know, we should go and pull out of Nevada quite yet because it is a situation of, and, and I know every, every race is a turnout race, but this really is a turnout, turnout, turnout. The more voters that turn out in Clark County, the more voters that turn out in Washoe County, Democrats win. Game, set, match. If they have low turnout rates, Republicans win. So that old Harry Reid machine, that well-oiled machine that had worked for decades needs to get back to it, needs to push, needs to get Clark County turned out. Even though Clark County itself has changed, they need to bring the, the Culinary Union and others need to get those Hispanic voters and bring them back into the Democratic fold. I mean, they're strongly in the Democratic fold, but there has been a bleeding off. The Democrats really need and the Culinary Workers Union need to really work to solidify that vote. And overall, I think the Democrats can squeak out a victory because as I mentioned in other videos, there's just something that even though polls will show people like Sharon Engel winning, Adam Laxalt winning, and other people winning, um, at the end of the day, the Democrats are able to win, especially during the time of Harry Reid. So I think at the end, the Democrats still win, but it's, it's, an, it's totally a turnout uh, affair right now. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I will be doing videos about other states. Go ahead and subscribe below. Hit the button or the bell or the button or whatever. Hit, hit something down there to go ahead and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later about the next state. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are. Bye-bye.